Sulawesi Shrimp Tank Setup From the Sulawesi Lakes to your living room Creating a stunning shrimp haven Are you ready to embark on a fascinating journey of keeping and breeding Sulawesi shrimp? Well, let's dive into the world of these vibrant creatures and review my latest method for setting up a successful Sulawesi Aquarium. Welcome everyone, this is Ray from RW Aquarium Pages. I'm here to share my journey in planted aquariums, shrimp tanks, and everything in between. Sulawesi shrimp, originating from the Sulawesi region of Indonesia, are found in freshwater lakes. They are known for their striking colors. Many of these beautiful species can thrive in our aquariums, and some even breed quite easily, such as the Sulawesi cardinals, also known as white socks. One key aspect of the natural habitat is the abundance of rockwood with algae covered rocks. Additionally, it's essential to replicate the specific water parameters. After researching water testing reports available on the internet, I found that the lakes in the Sulawesi maintain a pH level of 8.1 to 8.4, a TDS total dissolved solids reading of approximately 110, and a temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, which is roughly 84 degrees Fahrenheit. Don't worry, we'll discuss how to achieve these water parameters a bit later. In fact, I even have a separate video on my channel dedicating to mixing water for Sulawesi shrimp. Now let's talk about the aquarium setup. The size of the aquarium is quite interesting when it comes to Sulawesi shrimp. If it's too large, the males might struggle to find the females for reproduction. Additionally, if the aquarium is too overly spacious, and there aren't enough Sulawesi shrimp, their friends present, the shrimp tend to be quite shy based on my experience. For instance, a comparison of having just 10 shrimp versus 50 shrimp can make a noticeable difference. However, it's important to note that the larger volumes of water generally provide better stability for maintaining optimal water parameters. Based on my recommendations, as a general rule, I suggest going for a 10 to 20 gallon aquarium, which translates to approximately 40 to 80 liters. This volume allows the colony to grow and enables the males to locate the females for successful breeding. This volume offers decent stability. However, I must share an interesting observation from my own experience. I have successfully bred Sulawesi shrimp in a smaller 5 gallon aquarium, which is 20 liters. The key here is to be mindful of the water parameters as they may fluctuate in smaller volumes, but I've noticed in these smaller aquariums they actually encourage for better breeding. Keep in mind that the colony size does have limits and you'll eventually need to transfer them to a larger aquarium, so it's crucial to consider your long-term goals with Sulawesi shrimp. In my setup for the Sulawesi Blue Gold Shrimp, I've chosen the UNS60U Aquarium which has a capacity of 76 liters, which is approximately 20 gallons. The dimensions are 60 by 36 by 36 cm, which is about 24 by 14 by 14 inches. Alternatively, a standard 20 gallon long aquarium is an appealing footprint that can also be a great option. As a passionate enthusiast of shrimp photography and videography, I've noticed a significant difference in the quality of the photos and videos when using high clarity glass aquarium compared to those of standard glass. I highly recommend opting for high clarity rimless aquariums for the clean and visually pleasing look, though any type of aquarium will serve just fine for this purpose. Now let's move on to the setup process. First, I have some beneficial bacteria from the matcha line. Although various brands will work similar with different formulas, this powder acts as a supplement supporting the biodiversity of the aquarium ecosystem. I'll sprinkle a thin layer of this powder along the bottom of the aquarium. As for the substrate, I prefer using crushed black lava rock. EcoComplete is a readily available brand. It's essential to, ch to choose an inert substrate that won't affect the water parameters. 
While some people use crushed corals, which can raise the cage carbon hardness over time, that can potentially lead to less stable water parameters. I've found the most success with inert substrates. Personally, I lean towards the darker colored substrates as they enhance the beauty of the Sulawesi shrimp. These shrimp tend to feel safer in the environments with darker substrates, minimizing their exposure to bright lights and reflection. I've applied a thin layer of substrate, which has, has become my per preferred approach lately. Moving on to rockscape, I've opted for Icelandic lava rock and black lava rock. Similar to a substrate, these rocks are inert and won't affect the water parameters. Initially, I placed a few pieces, and later on, I'll add more for a visually appealing scape. Just like before, I sprinkled another layer of beneficial bacteria on the rocks and the substrate to foster a healthy environment. Now it's time to fill the aquarium with RODI, reverse osmosis deionized water, which has a base reading of zero, which lacks the GH, general hardness, or KH, carbonate hardness. I recommend filling the aquarium slowly to avoid disturbing the substrate layer. For the first filtration step, I prefer using a hang-on-back filter. In this particular setup, I've used an AquaClear hang-on-back filter which creates a gentle and pleasant flow within the aquarium. Next, I'll add a dual sponge filter, which is popular among shrimp keepers due to its simplicity and affordability. To expedite the cycling process, you can incorporate used filter media or sponges from another established tank. To maintain the appropriate temperature of 28 degrees Celsius, I place the heater in the aquarium Later on, I switched to a titanium heater for better efficiency. For additional safety and control, I've connected the heater to a heater controller, ensuring that the water temperature remains within the desired range and alerts me in case there's any deviations. It's essential to check the TDS of the water, which currently stands at 17 parts per million, which is fairly close to zero. The slight rise is from the bacteria powder. To remineralize the water, I recommend using Salty Shrimp Sulawesi 7.5 or 8.5. In this case, I'm using 7.5 for the cycling process and will adjust it to 8.5 later on. I will mix the powder into a small cup and then pour it into the aquarium. Closely monitor the tedious level until they reach the desired 110 parts per million. The next up is the introducing of nitrifying bacteria. There are many reliable brands and they all serve the same purpose. For this setup, I've chosen Seachem Stability. Now, take a look at the tank. It's nicely set up and ready to go. To provide optimal lighting, I place the CFL compact fluorescent lamp on top of the aquarium, as I found that CFL or T5HO lights work best for promoting growth of green dust algae on the glass walls. After a few weeks, you'll notice the algae thriving on the glass, creating a natural and beautiful environment. During this period, I will follow the stability method, which involves dosing it daily for 7 days. However, I will extend the duration to 14 days to ensure a stable and well-established aquarium. I'll add a few snails to help with the cycling and ghost feeding the aquarium for ammonia source. Now it's time for a 50% water change, remineralizing the water with Sulawesi Shrimp 8.5 instead of 7.5. Additionally, I've added some bacteria AE to enhance with biofilm production. But remember, don't overdose this product. After 4 weeks, I test the water to ensure that the ammonia, the nitrite, and nitrate levels are optimal. I introduced some yellow cherry shrimp or neocaridinas. This is quite an interesting topic. Personally, I've chosen to include neocaridinas with my Sulawesi setup as they have a really really good appetite and will almost eat almost anything. By having them alongside the Sulawesi shrimp, it teaches the Sulawesi shrimp to explore and attempt processed food. 
However, it's worth mentioning that some aquarists have achieved success with Sulawesi shrimp without incorporating yellow neocaridinas. As you can see, the walls of the aquarium are now covered with abundant green dust algae, contributing to the natural aesthetics of the tank. I will allow the entire process and the aquarium to mature for approximately 3 months before introducing my Sulawesi shrimp. I strongly recommend a period of 3-4 to four months for aging the process that ensures a stable and suitable environment for the shrimp. In my next video, I'll share the unboxing of my Sulawesi bluegill shrimp and guide you through the process of introducing them into the aquarium. Stay tuned for that exciting chapter. Setting up a successful Sulawesi Aquarium requires careful consideration of the shrimp's natural habitat and specific water parameters. By emulating the natural environment, we can create an ideal home for these colorful and fascinating species. Have you ever kept or bred Sulawesi shrimp? What was your setup like? Let's discuss, I'm curious to know. I absolutely love sharing my experiences, success and failures with everyone. It's just so exciting to document my journey in planted shrimp tanks and to share it with others. Stay tuned for more informative videos as I've got plenty of content in store for you. Thanks for watching and listening to my rambles. I really appreciate it. Have an awesome day and happy shrimp keeping. Thanks for watching.